All right, so I am drilling some half inch head studs uh, because I had a uh, thread failure on one of my holes and I figured why not just upgrade instead of doing a time surge, helicoil, whatever. So I'm doing the slow buck, doing it at home. Um, if the block dies, the block dies. Uh, cylinder seven on this has had a, it keeps, it used to keep bending rods. It was a back pressure issue. I figured it out, but I put like five rods in this thing in the attempts to figure out what it was. It ended up being uh, a collapsed uh, flex pipe in the crossover. Um, I don't, I didn't know that was even possible at the time. Uh, you know, I was new to sloppy. I was new to builds, whatnot. Um, so currently I have six drilled. Uh, I'm going to be working on uh, number seven here. Uh, but what I wanted to do was show you a technique so you can do this at home. So you need to get yourself a long 24, or sorry, long 27 64th drill bit. Uh, that's what you use for the half inch by 13 uh, thread. Uh, let me see if I can get it. So here she is, all of her glory. It's a big, uh, I, I bought the 12 inch one, got this right on Amazon, put a little piece of tape here as a thread stop. And that thread stop is there, uh, that's the cylinder head in my case. Um, I left the cylinder head on because I felt like the cylinder head might actually be a good guide. Uh, worked out okay. Uh, didn't have any issues. Honestly, going from the 11 millimeter to this, you know, 27 64th, it's really easy. The drill really just wants to go in, in that direction. If you screw it up, honestly, yeah, I don't know what to say. Um... Anyway, this isn't the hard part. The hard part is the threads. So here is my now screwed up tapered, uh, tapered tap here. So it's tapered, you can tell by the end of it, how it's got that nice little taper. So this is what you would typically use for starting your holes. And the first hole I did was actually this one right here and it went fine it cut through it had no problem bottomed out uh, let's see if you can see the threads down there not really but anyway it had no problem but uh let me fix this tripod here but what ended up being the problem was the second hole the second hole essentially the tap wanted to it went in what seemed like it was straight but it was actually off just a tiny bit and i couldn't tell and i couldn't see it well the tap moved its way down no problem you know it went down no problem and then when it got to where the original threads were because the threads don't come all the way to the top here the threads are an inch down but when it got down to the original threads because it was cocked at an angle if you think about it if this is where true is lose my finger as a point of reference if this is true and i'm coming down at this sort of an angle this is obviously exaggerated you can see that the distance at the bottom of the hole is great it's significantly greater than uh at the head of the bolt so the uh tap it just kept trying it was like it was running into a wall so i pulled the tap out and i took a look at it and um well would you look at it it was messed up and on top of that the hole looked like you could see the threads uh, a little bit jacked up so you would think okay blocks done it's toast throw it away you know paperweight now well I didn't because I started I figured why not just drill the next hole let's drill hole number three and we'll see if uh, see if you know I can fix it uh, if I can get a better technique for the rest of the holes maybe I'll return back to uh, cylinder or the that rear hole and it will be okay so I'm going to give you the tip on how to do it uh, in a way that let's see if I can zoom out here there we go 
I'm going to give you a tip for how to do this in a way uh, that you can do it cheaply, you can do it at home, um, and you'll still be able to get good enough results that you could run this with confidence. Um, sorry about my phone, getting notifications. So you need a nut. You need a half inch by 13 nut, probably get a couple of them. The right way to do this, this was my theory and this is probably what I should have done, but I couldn't find flat stock in the shop. Uh, you would take this nut, you'd weld it to some flat stock, you know, C clamp it, really clamp it down tight, and then, th and then drill a hole through it. And then this goes over the hole that you want to tap. You put, you know, this is my bottoming tap. This is actually sharper than the tapered tap. So I start with this now and it actually starts perfectly straight. So you put the tap, put the nut on the tap, and when you get it up to the block, you can push that straight into the block and it's, it's square. Now, once you start moving it, it's gonna to wanna to obviously push up on the, the nut. So what I did, is I took some vice grips, I grabbed it with some vice grips. These aren't set. Grabbed it with some vice grips. Made sure that the nut would be protruding because I just want this to grip the nut. Okay. So with that up against the block, I could then start threading this. Now I can put push a little bit of forward pressure down but I can also put forward pressure down up here. And the way you do that is by using a 12 point wrench. You take a 12 point wrench, you push it down, and you get the thread started. You just work it a little bit. There you go. I got a, probably about a half thread in. And I'll show you the technique for ensuring that it's 100% true. So once you get like two threads in, now these threads are only biting in about halfway into the material up here because the hole is bigger. So you don't want to put too much pressure in with what I'm about to show you. So we're good. Got all right. Yeah, we feel nice. We feel nice like that. Now, if I take this nut and I tighten it up a little bit, I mean, and I mean just barely, that nut is going to pull itself to the block. So you want to put a little bit of pressure. And what this is doing is it's trying to hold on. Heater almost went ham on us there. So if I take this nut and I tighten it a little bit it's actually going to try to square the nut to the block. It's going to try to flatten itself up against the block. Now, if you've ever had bolts before where you've done this, where you have something that's kind of like a little bit off, maybe a couple pieces of metal, they're not perfectly square. You'll see that like that nut uh, comes up or a bolt head comes up to something and it's not perfectly square, but as you tighten it, it kind of deforms and becomes, you know, square with the metal. That's kind of what you're doing here. But what it's going to end up doing is as I cut back and forth with this tap, it's going to open up, maybe say I'm off a little bit and I'm cutting too much in one direction and not enough in the other. Well, it's gonna straighten the tap out as I do that. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna work it back and forth. And you'll actually see the, right there. That's where it wants to go. If I tighten it up any more than that, it doesn't go. So what you do is you Back it off just a tiny bit. That takes pressure off. Now you can good. Now you're good to go. What I do is I just kind of check it every now and then, make sure that. See if I can move the vice grips up a little bit more. And if I can't, which I can't in this case, I leave it right where it's at. I know that it's true. So the threads are good here. That's why I was saying get a couple of nuts, because you're probably going to damage the, th the threads a little bit on the nut. It's kind of sacrificial. There we go. 
and I've checked, I've put uh, the half inch bolts and all of these and looked at them as well as I could at least and um, they're square. When I look down the holes, the holes have an equal amount of threads one side on the other. The only one that doesn't is the one that I messed up. The bolt when it goes in is a little wobbly to start but because I only messed up the threads where it matters that one inch down because I messed that up only a little bit I'm not too concerned about strength I still feel like this is going to be plenty strong for my goals so we're good here I could actually take this set of vice grips off which is what I'm going to do and if uh I haven't noticed here this stuff if you have it laying around use it for cutting thread once you'll your mind will be blown this is better than any oil wd-40 um cutting fluid i've used tap magic before um this stuff's amazing it is super smooth for drilling cutting threads whatever like incredibly smooth like this thing's going in like butter now Nice and smooth. And then you essentially just keep doing this until you get to the bottom, which I'm showing you to show you that you can do it at home. And you don't need, I mean, hey, if you're in a shop, if you're in a professional shop, you shouldn't be doing it this way. You should probably get yourself that tick performance, you know, not a plug or anything, of course, but you should get that tick performance uh, drill guide and, uh, tap guide and uh and do that because that thing is awesome so i'm only about I'm a little bit down the hole but you can see it's starting to get a little bit more struggle i'm starting to get a little bit of uh resistance it's actually because of the chips all the chips are down at the bottom so i gotta blow this thing out real quick usually i do it three times i do it right now i'll do it when it gets to like pretty much it's right at the bottom and then after that, I blow it out one more time just to ensure that when I hit bottom, I'm actually hitting bottom. Again, I'm using the bottoming tap. And I started the threads with the bottoming tap, not the taper. The taper one's messed up. So I'll take my blow gun. Don't worry about the pistons and crap. They're all coming out. I got to clean them up. Oh, let me get this tap just to make sure it's cleaned off. Spray some more of this down there. Don't need a lot. I mean, this thing just goes in like butter. You can do it by hand. I was using oil earlier, and I was like, let me get my HD heavy duty corrosion inhibitor. It's amazing stuff. Just Cosmoline, but it actually works really well for this. I was. Very surprised. Yeah, cutting them really nice. Now, should take you about five minutes roughly per hole. It's not a fast process. And if you had like a half inch breaker bar or something like that with a eight millimeter, at least in the case of this tap, it's an eight millimeter uh, or a five sixteenths. 12 point fits on it very snugly. You get a little bit more torque on it, you go a little bit faster. But, you know, if you're tapping the hole, there's no reason to be super aggressive. So, yeah, it's about time to clean up that one more time. I'm gonna just work this back and forth a little bit. And I don't like this wrench end because it cuts up my hand. And same with the block. Block's got a lot of sharp corners. So I'm only going to show you this one hole. I'm going to take a bolt, put it in just to prove to you that a half inch bolt goes in. If you're not square, the further it gets down, the harder it gets. It should feel smooth the whole way going down. Like you're not cutting a huge amount of material. It should feel like about the same amount of material. If it doesn't, then you either have chips behind. 
which you can hear it raining chips on the other side of my garage. It's either chips at the bottom and you're driving the chips into the blind hole or you're not square. And in my case earlier, I wasn't square. And then I did this technique and I don't know. I mean, for my own engines at least, I'm not going to buy a fixture. Also for my own engines, unless I'm doing something really heavy in drag racing, which I don't really see myself doing, more of a street kind of guy, just like having stuff that makes turbo noises. Um, you know, ice cream machine. In case you couldn't tell, ice cream machine. Uh, I don't really see the need to go to half inch studs. The only reason why I am is because I kind of needed to. I wasn't about to spend, if you ever look at the money of what a time shirt costs, the kit to do it, it's expensive. Fuel coil, same thing, unless you have a machinist do it. If you have a machinist doing it, oh boy. This cost me, it was $42 shipped to my house from Amazon. That got me the two taps, which I do recommend too. It's always better to start with the tapered one, but my tapered one's messed up now. Uh, those two taps and the 12 inch 27 64th drill bit. It's 42 bucks. Not bad, and I'll have it forever. Well, not the tapered one at least, not anymore. That drill bit is sharp though. Thing cuts really fast. There we go. Yeah, that was the bottom. I just hit the bottom. When you hit the bottom, it's... <laughs> you hit the bottom. You know when you hit the bottom. There's no give at all. Before, you could tell it was give because I was hitting chips. You could tell I was hitting chips because I had some give. Okay, so we'll take this out. Blow this out real quick. And then we'll throw half inch stud in it. One more time. Okay. Half inch by 13 bolt. Stud kit's not here yet. So this will have to do. Voila. That's it, guys. Hope that helps you drill your own head studs at home. Again, the key is a nut and vice grips, I guess. But you could do it with, uh, if you have flat stock, I'd recommend that as opposed to this. The flat stock will, uh, one, it'll push it up a little bit higher off the head, which will give you, it'll be a little bit better for truing purposes. But um, you don't have to hold on to those, which is good. It's flat, so you can like lay it up against here, hold it up against the cylinder, and while you push and get it started. And when you get it started, it's stupid easy. Don't do it with a dull tap. Just get a new tap and do it with that. It, it's, it works amazing. You just get it, you just work it a little bit for, what I do it for, like two seconds. Just start it like that, and then it works. Um, but otherwise, I still have a couple more holes to go, and then I have a whole nother side to do. So I'm going to get back to that. I hope this helps anybody that's thinking about doing this. And I hope you have a good night.